All right, chapter 12, second to last. Is this a witch, I ask? Ma shakes her head. There are different roles here in the realm of magic. Sis is a guardian, and she takes her job very seriously. She isn't angry with you, by the way. Could have fooled me, I, mur I mumble. She's mad at herself for trusting us with something so precious. We all failed her, not just you. That makes me feel a little bit better. I take a deep breath and say, Ma, can I give you a hug? Of course you can, she cries before wrapping her arms around me. I hold on tight for a long time. Then I step back and say, I'm sorry about not delivering all the dragons, but I sure am glad you're okay. Ma runs her thumb along my untamable eyebrows. Why wouldn't I be, Ma asks. You were attacked. I saw something charging straight at you. What did you see? Well, I pause and try to remember just what I saw from inside the transporter. The leaves behind you were shaking, and then there was a loud roar. And then? Then you closed the door, and the transporter took me back to Brooklyn. I try to sound respectful, but Ma must hear the resentment in my voice, because she says, You understand why I did that, right? You probably wanted to protect the dragons, I say. And? I sigh. And I guess you wanted to protect me, too. But I didn't want to go back to Brooklyn. Sure you did. That's why the transporter sent you home. It reads your intention, remember? Ma starts walking down the road, and I trail after her. But I was supposed to help you. I guess you don't want me to be your apprentice anymore, I say sullenly. When did I say that, Ma barks angrily. The first thing you gotta learn is if you're going to work with me, Jax, is how to follow orders. When I say go, you go. Understand? Yes, ma'am. You did exactly what I needed you to do, and that helped a lot. Even though I just got yelled at, I feel a smile tugging at the corners of my mouth. Maybe I haven't lost my dream job after all. For a long while, we walk in silence. The trees tower over us, and I start to feel their soothing energy settling over me. Ambrose said you wouldn't have sent me back without a plan. Ma laughs. Did that make you feel better? I nod and Ma says, Then I'm glad bro told you that. But the truth is, Jax, in this line of work, sometimes you don't have time to make a plan. Sometimes you just have to use whatever you've got with whatever you can. Sometimes you have to use whatever you've got to do whatever you can. Now, I'm not going to stand here and tell you I was happy to see that dinosaur coming straight at me. Ugly as sin it was, with more teeth than I could count. My eyes grow wide as I imagine Ma having to face the most ferocious dinosaur of all. A T-Rex? I doubt I'd be talking to you right now if a T-Rex had popped out of the bushes. No, it was a lot smaller than that, but it walked the same way and had a funny kind of flap on top of its head. I make a mental note to ask Vic what kind of dinosaur that might be. Then I ask, so what did you do? So why, I grabbed hold of that funny flap and swung around onto its back. Of course, that was after I zapped it a couple of times with my cane. Not sure it felt a thing with that thick hide, though. Then he used a mild enchantment to make it more manageable. Ran like the wind, that dinosaur. I wish I could have seen Ma riding on the back of an enchanted dinosaur. I don't know if it's the trees or Ma's story that makes me so happy, but I can't stop grinning. I may have lost one of the dragons, but I've got Ma back, and we've got magic on our side. Ma pats me on the shoulder and says, That crystal you got from me came in real handy, Jax. I used it to send you back, and then I rode that dino as close as I could get to that volcano. All that energy helped me make a giant leap forward in time. Once I was back in the 21st century, I sent a signal to Sis. She gathered her lovelies, her helpers, and came to get me. But how could you travel through time without a transporter? Same way I sent you back without me. Piezoelectricity. Ever heard of that? I shake my head and listen carefully as Ma explains. The transporter is a device powered by the mind, and our brains give off electric signals. Well, crystals also give off an electric charge when they're under pressure. So I used a compression spell that allowed me to crush the crystal with my hand. That released enough energy to jumpstart the transporter, and you steered it with your thoughts. When I was ready to make my own journey, I just needed a way to contain all the energy I was trying to harness, from my own mind, the crystal, and the volcano. So I found a hollowed out tree, used my compass to set the right coordinates, and then I got lucky. I look ahead and see that Sis is waiting for us next to the guardhouse. At least a dozen butterflies circle her head and shoulders, wrapping her in a rainbow veil. The lost dragon must be returned to me, Sis says solemnly. The girl is no thief. She now feels bound to the creature just as it feels bound to her. But those dragons, all of them, belong here with me. They do not belong in your world. I know, sis, Ma says. I sure am sorry things turned out this way. But we'll get this mess cleaned up. Leave it with me. Sis sweeps her dark eyes over me. The boy cannot be trusted. Hold on now, Ma says as she drapes a protective arm across my shoulders. He's had a rough first day on the job and Jack still has a lot to learn. But I trust him and I'll need his help to set things right. I will provide the help that you need, Sis says. That won't be necessary, Ma says with a smile that seems a bit forced. I insist, Sis replies in a way that makes it clear her offer cannot be refused. As 
Ma simply nods and Sis raises her hand. The butterflies gather around and Sis selects a fiery red one to accompany us back to Brooklyn. I watch as she cradles the butterfly in the palm of her hand, whispering instructions that Ma and I can't hear. The other butterflies wheel away on the breeze and then the red one flits from Sis to me. Hold out your hand, Ma says. I do as I'm told and the red butterfly settles in my palm. I don't see how a flimsy butterfly is going to help us transport a fast-growing dragon, but Ma and Sis must know something I don't. It's a picture of Sis. Very regal. A little scary. Sis runs her hand over Ma's neatly braided hair and says, Remember your promise. When you return, you will stay. For a moment, Ma says nothing, and part of me hopes she'll refuse. How will I learn all there is to know about magic if Ma retires so soon? But after a few more seconds, Ma finally nods. Sis opens her arms and Ma steps into a hug that lasts a long time. I look at the peaceful smile on Ma's face and wonder if that's how I look when Mama holds me. Finally, Ma and Sis split apart. Ma goes over to the guardhouse and opens the door. I try to follow her, but Sis blocks my way. You have in your possession things that are precious to me. See that you treat them with care and return them unharmed, boy. My name's Jax, I tell her, in my most respectful voice, and I won't let you down, Sis. I'm not sure why, but I decide to add... I promise. One of Sis's eyebrows goes up in surprise. A promise in this realm carries real weight, Jax. It means a lot in my world, too, I tell her. Sis looks down at me and I think I can see something in her eyes that wasn't there before. Respect. She steps aside and I squeeze past Ma to stand inside the dark guardhouse. To my surprise, the butterfly's red wings start to pulse with light as they slowly open and close. Maybe this little helper will come in handy after all. Until we meet again, I hear Sis say. Then the door closes and Ma places her hands on my shoulders. Ready, Jack? she asks. Ready, Ma, I reply. The guardhouse shudders and then shoots upward and takes us back to Brooklyn. All right, that's the end of chapter 12. Just one more chapter left.